So you're here to learn about Poke It. Yeah, it's a funny name and there's a whole story to it. Maybe Tim Grimm, whose picture's above me, can tell you about it someday. Tim wrote this little VBA that allows you to select elements that are similar to other elements and do a whole lot more. What you see behind me is the Bentley community page. There'll be a link to it in the comments down below. To the right, you'll see there's a link to download a zip file. That zip file contains the VBA, the DGEN lib, and a PDF, which are instructions on how to install it. Before you install it, you do want to check with your CAD administrator or your IT department. Make sure that there's no problems with you doing that. We don't want to cause a kerfuffle or anything like that. So with no further ado, let's go see how this works. Okay, so we're in the file. Let's see what's in the file. So we've got a variety of elements over here. Text, lines, shapes, different attributes, level, color, style, and weight. We also have the attribute toolbar open. So when I use the place similar feature in Pokit, you're going to see the attributes change. That's cool. Also, I'm in the element selection tool. Element selection and Pokit work together. So let's go ahead and get started. But now we're going to take a look at how does Pokit actually work. So on the screen here, I've got some elements, different attributes, different types of elements, different levels, things like that. I also opened up my attributes dialog here so you can see the attributes change when we use the first option we'll look at, it, which is place similar. And I also am in the element selection tool, and that is what is required to make Pokit work. It works with element selection. So the first thing we'll look at is the place similar. So I'm going to move my cursor over this line. I'm going to, on my mouse, press and hold the right button down. And there at the top of my context menu are the Pokit options. So at the very top, you're going to see place similar. Now, when I choose this, it's going to change my active attributes here and my tool. So I'm going to choose place similar. You can see my active attributes changed and the tool that I'm in is changed. So now I can draw a line that has the same attributes as that element. So if I go ahead and go back to element selection, press and hold the right button. Element selection is right there. Next thing we'll look at is selecting elements. So I'm going to move my cursor over this text, which is green. I'm going to press and hold the right button down and there is select. I have options here. I can select similar, which means similar elements that are same level, color, style, weight, type, and class. So I'm going to go ahead and choose similar. And you can see it selected five pieces of text that all had the same level, color, style, and weight in class. So I'm going to clear my selection set by doing a left click. I'm going to go back. I'm going to press and hold the right button on the green text again. We're going to do select again. This time we're say color. I want to select all the elements that have that color. I'm going to slide on over. I'm going to choose color. And you can see now it's selected eight elements that have that same color. Now this does and will select elements that are on levels that are turned off. So you need to be aware of that. So I'm going to go ahead and unselect the elements. Oh, also it selects elements that are in a reference file. So we're going to go back. We're going to press and hold the right button on the text again. This time we're going to look at isolate. So for isolate, we have selection, meaning the element that I've selected, and this will basically turn off everything except for this element. I can choose again, I have similar or I have it by attributes. So I'm going to say isolate by similar. So what it's done is look for text that's got the same level, color, style, and weight, and so on. Now to bring everything back, I'm going to press and hold the right button. And at the top, poke it knows that you've got a display set. It's going to clear it for me. So I choose clear, isolate, hide. Everything comes back. So let's go down to this shape. And we're going to go ahead and press and hold the right button. And this time we're going to say we want to hide. So again, we can hide by selection. We can do it by similar, or we can do it by any one of these attributes. I'm going to say by element type. Now this happens to be a shape. So when I choose element type, I have it set to hide. It's hidden all those elements that met that requirement that are shapes. To bring everything back, press and hold the right button. At the very top is clear, isolate, hide. Everything comes back. Now I can also do something called inverse selection. So let's say I'm going to select these elements here. And what I'd like to do is actually unselect these elements and select everything else. So with those elements selected, again, I press and hold the right button on my mouse. 
I get these options at the bottom here. One of them is invert selection. I go ahead and select that. It's unselected those elements I had selected and then selected everything else. Again, even if the level is turned off, you need to be aware of that. So now I've got all those elements selected. So I'm gonna clear my selection set. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select all the elements that are green. So I'm gonna move my cursor over one of the green elements, say select similar. I'm gonna say selected by color. Now it's selected all of those elements. Now let's say really what I wanted was just this text here. So I'm gonna press and hold the right button. And this is a fun thing, fence subset. So it's gonna let me use MicroStation's place fence tool to basically further define my selection set. So I'm gonna create a subset of the elements that I have currently selected. So I'm gonna choose this. It puts me in the place fence tool. I'm gonna to go ahead and place my fence now you notice that I am in overlap and I'm also overlapping other elements. Typically it would have selected those elements, but it's only looking at the elements that I had selected through poke it. So I'm going to pick my fence ending here. And now I only have those elements selected because this is a subset using the fence of my selection set. So I'm going to go ahead and clear my selection set. I'm going to go back and press and hold the right button. The last thing we'll look at is poke it settings. So there's two options here, use apparent attributes and use actual attributes. It's recommended that you go with use apparent attributes. Apparent attributes means what you see on the screen. Now those green elements that we were using, they could be the color green, or we could also have level overrides turned on, making them appear green on the screen. Use actual attributes also behaves a little differently when it comes to the color being set to by level. So it looks at them and says, oh, they're all by level. Select all the elements that have the color set to by level. Doesn't matter what color they are, it's a by level attribute. And the last thing is the about poke it, and this will bring up information about the poke it, and it'll also take you to the documentation for poke it. So hopefully you're gonna get this downloaded, check with your IT department or your CAD manager, make sure it's cool with them, and I think you're going to find this to be really helpful. See you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.